decision summary this research we carried out at the Cloud Lab at Boston College. Our lab is mostly interested in RNA structure and RNA synthetic design. And in this case, the title is RNA Fall to T, Constraint Programming Design of Thermosuit Tires. Uh, so let's start with the, by the basics. Now it's widely known that there are many types of non-coding RNAs that uh, cover, cover a wide variety of cellular processes, including you know, the transcript degradation, uh, transcript localization, etc. And uh, but despite the importance of uh, RNA specific motifs, sequence motif, the RNA structure of non-coding RNAs is primarily determined by function, and the forces that determine the RNA structure are base pair and stacking interactions. So likely we can just use a secondary structure, the sum among canonical base pairs, as a scaffold for the tertiary structure, and therefore it's a good predictor for function. There are several computational methods to compute the, the problem that is called RNA folding. So given a sequence, find the minimum free energy structure or the more stable structure into which sequence is going to fold. There are the many algorithms to implement this, this, this uh, super algorithm with slightly different variations. It can be solved in cubic time. But we are most focused in the RNA inverse folding. That is the opposite problem. Is given a target structure, find the sequence whose minimum free energy structure is the target structure. This problem is uh, by far more complex than RNA folding. In fact, it's been claimed to be, to be EMP complete. And there are several methods that deal with this problem, uh, like Frankenstein, RNA inverse, NewPack. And all of them are heuristic and based on mostly local search methods that for the idea of synthetic design that is closely related to RNA inverse folding, it has several limitations. Specifically, when you use local search in inverse folding methods, you design your sequence, generate your sequences, and you usually have a few sequences that you have to analyze, go back, it doesn't match your perspective, and finally go for validation. We designed a RNA fold where we saw that this problem can be improved in two specific parts. The design, by deciding where are the specific characteristics of the RNA we want to design, and generating by far a large number of sequences that we are going to filter and, and analyze for, uh, for in order to select some candidates for experimental validation. So among the synthetic, the design constraints that we can specify using RNA eyeful, it's, uh, most of them are support only for RNA eyeful. It's included, for example, using partial target structure, we can relax our target structure which uh, we can choose different RNA folding methods because we have some different energy parameters can change the predictions, minimize uh, free energy, specific different type of sequence constraints like GC content, number of base pairs of each type, uh, avoiding to have uh, long stretches of consecutive nucleotides, and even include amino acid coding constraints that it will allow to, uh, to design sequences that overlap with the specific uh, coding regions. So RNA fold is based on constant programming, it's a difference of local search algorithms. So therefore it's able to generate all possible solutions for small structures and millions for longer structures. In fact, complete search is impractical for very long structures. But it can also determine for this type of structure that no solution is to exist. On the other hand, we want to a fast algorithm, we can use a large neighborhood search, a variation, where we can find a solution very, uh, very fast. And it generates two orders of magnitude more solutions than any other software that is, uh, or is ideal for the purpose of our type of design. So it's open source, scalable. So it makes it probably the state of the art inverse folding algorithm. And we have used uh, RNA fold uh, beyond the, the pure synthetic design. For example, we have the design synthetic hammerheads only from our farm alignment. And we, it has been used for the discovery of functional RNAs that all their uh, methods cannot detect, the functional analysis of the structural motifs, comparative analysis of the properties of non-coding RNAs, or we have shown how it can be used for re-engineering and some non-selling system varying proteins to incorporate cis elements to include uh, cis -tain. So then we decided to take our uh, software a little bit further and design a RNA fold to t that can, there's created for the design of RNA thermometers. RNA thermometers are cis regulatory elements with sensitive conformation upon temperature shift. Uh, so they, they will have more two types, that RNA zippers that can unfold when the temperature raises, or RNA switches that fold into two different temperatures, into two different structures at two different temperatures. So for that, 
First uh, challenge is solve the multi-temperature inverse folding, given two target structures, S1 and S2, and two target temperatures, T1 and T2. We have to find the sequence whose minimum free energy structure at T1 is S1 and at T2 is S2. So we design a RNA fold to T, and it, a RNA fold to T cannot work with more than two structures. In fact, you can specify any, name, uh, any number of temperatures or structures that you want, and it, it includes all the design features of a RNA fold without losing any type of performance. And uh, in the same way, it can generate all possible solutions for short sequences and can determine that no solution exists. So the CP algorithm is the constraint programming is different from local search because lo local search we have a specific cost function a mini that we try to minimize, and instead of uh, looking at doing a small search, constraint programming is uh, performs as uh, exhaustive uh, search along the space, and it, it has four characteristics that determine the, the efficiency of the algorithm: the model that determine the tree, the constraints that specify when the tree this tree is going to be prone. Uh, the heuristic that determines what is the, the order we are going to traverse this tree, so it largely improves the, the, determine the speed of the search and the objective. If we don't want to explore the whole tree, when we're going to stop. So for the structural decomposition, specifically for two target temperatures, we, we can take advantage of the uh, RNA folding is hierarchical and decompose on one structure into several components and decide and solve each one of these uh, structures in a specific order. When we have more than one target structure, we can create a tree with two structures and determine the basis of the overlap or the inclusion of one structure into another, what is the optimal order to solve this inverse folding problem. A second choice for uh, improving the speed of the algorithm is uh, selecting what is the order in which the values are going to be instantiated. So for example, if we uh, assign this DC, automatically the constraint, pro uh, the constraint programming engine will know that this has to pair with this and this G automatically will be assigned. Uh, when we have assigned a specific uh, structures, uh, we use classic RNA folding methods to determine if the minimum free energy structure of this subsequence is the target structure at the given temperature until we finally find a solution. If we want to improve the search, the speed of the algorithm, but we lose the, uh, the ability of having complete search, we can use LNS, where we find a look, uh, do a, perform a CP search for a small amount of time, and when we don't find a solution, we keep the parts uh, of the, our sequence that seems more, most promising, and we can jump to another part of the search tree until we find a solution. So there are other methods to solve the uh, RNA inverse folding problem. In, we, their objective is just find at least one solution in a given amount of time. RNA fold to T performs as well as other uh, RNA inverse folding algorithms. But for, for the purpose of our design, what we want is to find as many solutions as possible in a given amount of time. And here is where the RNA fold is more interesting. We can see that it can generate even three orders of magnitude more solutions than any other software. That is very useful for our type uh, of design, and not only for design. We, for example, try, we wanted to investigate whether the some specific functions that are used to find, to solve the inverse folding method, the two temperature inverse folding problem, are optimized. For example, uh, RNA Swiss, Swiss design, that is one of the problems that solve the two temperature inverse folding, use a cost function that minimize the free energy in the ensemble for its target structure at the respective folding temperature. And at the same time, it maximizes the difference between free energy at the target temperature at the wrong temperature. So we, want to, we wanted to investigate whether natural sequences are really optimized for this cost function, because it seems a good method to, find, to solve the RNA inverse folding method. And what we did is we use uh, RNA fold and uh, Frankenstein and Swiss design to generate a large number of sequences during 24 hours. We in, in, specifically we use the lambda thermal free family of thermoregulators, and when we so for each sequence we find the two minimum free energy structure at different temperatures, and we computed the cost function that we mark with an arrow and generate different uh, different uh, uh, large number of solutions. As we see, we, we have a big number of solutions. The the cost function is locally is localized mostly on the average of the distribution, where other methods tend to minimize this cost function and create sequences that are, have a very low cost 
that probably are not good in when we are trying to do real design. The other hand, we use the, our software to for the synthetic design of thermo switch air, thermo air switches using the pipeline at the script. They're gonna give some background. Now that the translation initiation complex in Eucharist, uh, it's complex and it require it has a very complex uh, protein mach machinery. Then, among other things, require the five uh, prime cap that is required, but. Some viruses and many genes have a, what is called an iris, an internal ribosomal entry site, that overrides part of this machinery. Specifically, all of them override the, the necessity of having a 7 methyl one assigned uh, 5 prime cap. So our objective was designing an RNA molecule with cap-independent translation activity only at higher temperatures. For this, we use as model uh, the foot and mouth disease virus iris. We say, for several reasons. First, because it's one of the uh, only uh, irises that doesn't have a um, pseudonauts, and it's very well studied. So we focus on or, or studying just one specific part, domain four and five, which have some specific conservation, and in specifically domain five, which is composed by a hairpin loop, a stem loop, and a polypyrimidine tract where uh, the PTB protein binds. We know that if we disrupt this structure, the, poly, the PTB bind, pro, binding protein couldn't, could, could not bind here, and we have some spacer that we can play with. So the idea was replacing domain five by a thermal switch, where it's a high temperature, has the natural, the normal uh, uh, structure, where it activates transcription, uh, uh, translation, and at low temperatures, it sequesters the polypyrimidine tract into a stem loop. So for the design, we put the native the NTP structure at 42 degrees and this other structure at 30 degrees. And at the same time, we specify, so, uh, specify some design constraints like keeping conserved positions, maintain a similar polypyrimidine track. We ran a RNA poll for uh, several days and we got like 2,100 sequences more. From what we selected by, we start the filtering by checking whether the the, the uh, domain four is affected when we replace uh, when we replace our domain five by our domain. Then we compute the we prioritize our candidates by the probability of its target structure of uh, the corresponding temperature and the accessibility of the polypyrimidine tract. It can be measured in different ways. The probability that this that this region is unpaired. So our collaborators are this, uh, in Madrid. Uh, they tested in vitro and in vivo. Uh, these uh, irises, these uh, thermal irises, and some of the candidates showed increased cap independent activity at 42 degrees. However, the translation efficiency is still low. So uh, we could have taken steps to improve this design, but since this is just a proof of concept, we didn't have taken these steps, these, these steps right now. Uh, so in summary, we have a uh, RNA poll to t that is the state of the art complete inverse fold in algorithm, but specifically unique flexibility for constraint design. It can solve the inverse fold, the inverse folding problem for multiple target structure and temperatures, generate a large number of solutions. From note that no solution exists for short structure. It's fast when we don't need require completeness. And we have shown that it can be used to identify the properties of natural thermo switches, like studying whether they are optimized for a specific cost function. And we use this specific, this synthetic design approach based on the generation of large number of sequences for posterior filtering and candidate selection for experimental validation for the computational design of thermo iris switches. So, and with that, I want to thank uh, Pierre Claude, my advisor, Mir Bayegan, part of my lab too, Ivando too, uh, actually in the grip on Barcelona, our collaborators in Madrid who did the experimental design uh, travel funding uh, to SMB that was, was kindly generously provided by Akamai Technologies, and the, our funding of, of fund from the NSA Nice Science Foundation that allow us to carry on this research. And thank you.